Okay, I think that means we're ready to start. <clears throat> so uh, first off, let me thank you very much for coming and spending some time with us this afternoon. Uh, obviously, this is something we're really, really excited to talk to you about. Uh, the team's been working on this for a bit, um, and we think it's really going to change the way that people think about compute and running containers on, on, on AWS. And um, what we're going to do today is uh, spend some time and, and, and give you a little bit of insight into our journey. What have we learned over the last three years of running uh, production container workloads uh, and, and working with our customers or who are doing that at a really massive scale? Uh, what did we learn? What did we hear that kind of got us to the point where we thought a technology like AWS Fargate would, would offer a lot of benefit and value to customers? And then we're going to take some time. Uh, my colleague uh, Deepak is going to come on stage and actually talk really deep into the product, how we expect it to work, uh, what you'll see underneath the hood, and we'll actually do a demo of uh, Fargate running today. So uh, to start, <clears throat> uh, let me just jump a little bit into back three years ago, because that's about what it was, about three years ago, almost to the day that we were here announcing uh, the release of Amazon ECS. Uh, and when we launched ECS three years ago, we were trying to solve a couple specific problems for customers. Uh, our customers had started running and using Docker. They really loved the user experience about Docker. A lot of the primitives that Docker exposed as far as how they could build their applications. Uh, but as they went to run those at scale, um, they introduced some new challenges around how to manage applications. They were uh, going from monolithic applications to microservices. Uh, they were now running hundreds to thousands or tens of thousands of containers. Uh, they had to think about managing clusters of resources, how to properly make sure that those uh, nodes were utilized uh, from a cost perspective, how to handle failure scenarios. They still had to deal with the, the management of the infrastructure. Uh, and so when we launched ECS, our goal was uh, pretty simple. We wanted to remove the heavy lifting um, around that infrastructure management. So customers who were running things like Mesos, or Zookeeper and had to figure out how to scale those, uh, those types of applications. We wanted them to use uh, a service, a core set of APIs that they could just manage the lifecycle of what we call tasks. A task is a, a group of containers that make up your application. And so uh, that's what we did. We focused on building uh, ECS. We launched that three years ago, and we've learned quite a bit from the use cases that customers have brought to this product. One of the first obvious ones is uh, to run a reliable container-based infrastructure is you need a reliable container registry. And so the following year at reInvent in 2015, we announced Amazon Elastic Container Registry, or ECR. And the goal there was to provide a really high-performant, secure private repository where customers could store their images. Um, and after that, what we learned is this ecosystem really allowed customers to start to scale their applications. Uh, they took advantage of the primitives that, that Docker provided early on, the packaging, the distribution model, the immutable infrastructure, and that led to this really uh, fast growth of container-based workloads on AWS. Uh, today, uh, in the last, uh, since 2016, we've seen uh, active usage grow by 450% on ECS. We're running hundreds of millions of containers each week launching these across millions of instances. So that's really uh, bringing use cases up to our, uh, right, right to our, our, our doorstep and saying, hey, these are new problems that as you're running workloads of this scale and trying to use containers, like you gotta go solve, right? We have to go solve these for customers. So what we've done over the last couple of years their first goal was to give you the same power that you get when you're using an EC2 instance, all the, the primitives that you got accustomed to building your applications. We've been working to make those operate at the task level. So things like VPC networking, which we launched a couple weeks ago, um, you get all the value and power of AWS VPC now at the task primitive. Uh, things like our task placement engine, which we launched at the end of last year, where you can do uh, uh, preformed algorithms around BIM packing or high availability placement of tasks, um, run things across distinct instances. Um, we've invested in powerful scheduling engines, right, where you can run millions of containers in a single cluster. 
Um, we've expanded to be in uh, 13 or 14 different regions, AWS regions. We realize that now customers, including internal AWS teams, are building on top of ECS as a tier one service. We've just got to be everywhere, right? So we invested in making sure that our service was available in, in a global manner. Um, integration with things that are just core functionality if you're going to build an application today. Things like load balancers and auto scaling. Um, visibility through CloudWatch metrics and cloud, um, CloudWatch logs. We also built a, a CLI that allowed you to um, help with the transition. A lot of our customers were uh, getting started and coming from working with Docker on their laptop. They use Docker Compose. We want to make that a seamless experience so that they can use a Compose YAML file and easily get started um, setting up an ECS cluster and running tasks on top of ECS. So uh, this kept us pretty busy. Um, and uh, in the first uh, couple years, um, what we were able to do is deliver 50 uh, features, or more than 50 features, to build up this ecosystem, to really with the goal of making the task a primitive that our customers can operate at. Um, I like this little flywheel. If you've um, seen some Amazon presentations before, you might have seen a flywheel or something similar to this. But really, this is how we think about this as, from, from our team perspective. Um, the building of these features and getting these into our customers' hands opens up new use cases and feedback that we can learn from. The more we learn, the more that our team takes that information from you guys, and, and we try and experiment, we try and build new technologies, new features, we get those back into your hands, and now all of a sudden this flywheel is spinning pretty quickly because we're just getting a, a ton of inf information. Right? especially at scale with all, all the, the customer growth and, the, and, the, and the, the number of containers that are running across AWS today. Um, it's just really been a pouring of feedback that's allowed us to think about, well, what should we go build next? What's that next big problem that we can solve that allows you to operate um, more efficiently and uh, build applications in this new manner? And so what the big lesson we've learned, um, and we feel is you know, fairly obvious, was uh, the more we encouraged and built primitives that are based off of the task, the more our customers just wanted to build their applications and think about applications in that level. They never wanted to think about the EC2 infrastructure anymore. Right? Um, they wanted to think about uh, modeling their application in the task definition. They want to think about things um, above that stack, how these applications um, can talk to, to each other, things like service discovery. Um, uh, they want to think about how to run that application and build it so that it's highly available. But underneath, right, the EC2 instance management, the managing the clusters, the uh, patching the operating systems, handling the life cycle of those nodes, that was uh, another layer of undifferentiated heavy lifting that we still hadn't solved for customers. <clears throat> and so that's why we built Fargate. And that's what um, Andy announced today. And we're really, really excited about it because what we think that this solves is giving you a new primitive, a new compute primitive, to really um, build your applications around. There's uh, no more infrastructure management to worry about. We, we kept the cluster model and construct because we wanted to give you a, a secure way to run these containers uh, and an isolation boundary that patterned what you do with ECS today. So that, that isolation boundary spans. You can have heterogeneous clusters where you're running ECS tasks as you do today and now Fargate tasks. And Deepak will get in a lot more detail um, as he dives deeper into the product. But uh, we kept the cluster concept um, simply as an organizational or security boundary. But inside of that, when you're running Fargate tests, there's now no more infrastructure for you to manage. So really, there's three key takeaways. No more instance management. You get a task-native API experience. And now, what that allowed us to do is change the entire consumption model. Now you don't need to think about EC2 instances. All you do is pay for the CPU and the memory uh, that you provision per task at the per second level. Right? So that's how this product is designed and built to work. And so uh, we think that it provides a simple, easy to use, yet still extremely powerful way to run your applications and your containers. Uh, so we talked about investing to make the task a, a primitive with ECS. What happens with Fargate? Well, ECS is still the powerful engine. Fargate is just a technology that we've built that um, really sits on top of ECS. So in this case, all the things that we've been working on in the last couple of years to give you, you know, powerful uh, networking capabilities with VPC, the load balancers, the ability to scale um, your infrastructure, or now your tasks, um, that stuff all just works. It's still continuing to work the same way that it worked with ECS. 
um, and it will continue to work when you're running Fargate tasks. You kind of get that for free as part of the process. Um, we're not starting from scratch. Those, those integrations are all there um, as of today uh, when we announced general availability earlier this morning. So what about um, EKS? You heard us talk about our new managed Kubernetes offering. Uh, well, we want to make this technology, AWS Fargate, work across orchestration. So our goal um, in 2018 is to make it such that you can use Fargate with Kubernetes clusters as well. So we're pretty excited about that. And really, the goal there is to give you choice, whether you want to use ECS as the orchestration or you want to use Kubernetes. Um, it's your choice which engine to use. Um, we're going to make it such that Fargate enables all those use cases. Great. Would you like to learn more and actually see a live demo? <laughs> OK, awesome. So let me invite up Deepak. Uh, he's been working on this product, leading the, uh, the, the product definition. And he's going to take you through um, where we ended up, what we're excited to talk to you about today, and a demo. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Deepak Dayama, product manager in the Container Services team. Very excited to be here and talk about Fargate. So we will discuss some of the use cases for Fargate, how it works, and demo, and visit some of the key product features. Fargate, if you look at the use cases that you can address with Fargate, it really addresses the breadth of use cases that you can do with containers today. For example, if you look at microservices, Microservices, by definition, are independently deployable services that work together, modeled around a single business domain. What a platform like ECS does, and Fargate enables you even further to do, is to let developers be able to, who are working on these applications, be able to choose their deployment cadence and scaling requirements without any additional infrastructural considerations. Similarly, another case that we see is around bad jobs. If you're running jobs that are maybe shorter lived, are intermittent, and you don't know when they would start up, and you typically have to provision clusters, stand up these, com this compute capacity in advance of running these jobs. Now, that does not become a consideration anymore. And lastly, if you look at containers itself, they're an excellent way to be able to port applications not only between environments, such as your local environment and dev and prod, but also do a lift and shift from on-premises to the cloud. And if you're doing that, you probably have been managing infrastructure in the on-premises, you don't want to do that again. So Fargate enables you to be able to focus on the container and the application. So use cases are good, but how do I run these containers on Fargate? Anthony discussed earlier about a thinking behind building Fargate and how it eliminates undifferentiated heavy lifting of infrastructure when it comes to running containerized workloads. We now want to discuss how Fargate can be used in action. As, as mentioned earlier, we have launched Fargate today with support for Amazon ECS, with plans to be able to support EKS in 2018. So we will discuss for the purpose of this session how it works with ECS and demo that. So if you want to start a container, that should be pretty easy, a couple of commands. You can get going on your local environment. Not much effort required. You want to spin up containers in the cloud? That's pretty straightforward, straightforward too. You can launch a few instances, spin up your containers in a similar way. But that works for a few dozens of containers, perhaps. But as you think about scaling this and managing this, say you have hundreds of instances, 
and dozens of applications running on them, and you want to have high availability, and you want to manage the life cycle of these instances and placement of your containers. So this doesn't scale. So you want to run, let's say, an application that spans three availability zones in a highly res resilient fashion. ECS enables you to be able to operationalize this. So the cluster management piece in ECS enabled you to monitor the cluster, scale it using auto-scaling groups, and be able to manage the state and take actions based on the instance state in the cluster. Secondly, now that your cluster management is taken care of, you now want to take care of placing your container on containers or tasks in ECS speak on these instances. The placement engine enables you to be able to do that based on your preferences, whether that is to get bin packing on the instances you're running or to be able to get AZ spread for high resiliency. And finally, the advanced scheduling features enable you to be able to maintain the desired state of the service that you are running, whether it is a minimum desired count that the service should have at all times or be able to respond to scaling events and launch more tasks. The service scheduler is aware of these definitions at the service level and takes actions based on that. So this enables you, as Anthony mentioned earlier, to run, we have seen run, running hundreds of millions of containers every week. But if you double click on that, in those instances, there's another layer of management that you have to do. You have to manage the Docker daemon. Worry about the version that you're running there. You have to manage the underlying operating system, ensure it's patched and up to the latest security, uh, security patches. So if you really look at it, there are these multiple layers of management. So as you try to scale, you did not want to run all these layers of management. All you wanted to do was run containers. Fargate enables you to do just that. It's the, so with ECS and Fargate, you get a fully managed orchestration as well as data plane experience bringing your focus back to the container. As you notice, there are no more instances. You just see these tasks being placed in the availability zones that you want, and you can still leverage the service, uh, service scheduling uh, and orchestration capabilities of ECS. So let's talk about how to use Fargate with ECS. You want to think about Fargate as a technology and not a different service per se when using it with ECS. That is no new APIs or primitives to learn. Here's a screenshot of ECS when you define an application. You get a choice whether you want to run that application as an ECS launch type or a Fargate launch type. If you want to run uh, your containers on the EC2 instances as you would have been, would uh, do until today, that is called the EC2 launch type. Similarly, the, uh, the API is, remains the same when it comes to running these tasks and services. It's just a new parameter that you define at the time of launching, which is, say, launch type Fargate. So you continue to define the applications as you do today for ECS. It is the same application definition schema. Obviously, there are some compatibility considerations. So you cannot run your tasks in, let's say, a privileged mode. There are also networking considerations that I will, uh, I will get to in a little bit. But you don't have any additional plugin to be able to run your containers with Fargate. And you can continue to leverage the same constructs. So your migration between EC2 and Fargate launch types is rather simple. And in that case, you, you have the flexibility to be able to pick the launch type that meets your application needs the best. So let's do a quick demo.
Okay, so let me just switch the. So in this demo, I'll just go over the CLI uh, experience with Fargate. Uh, we just today we released ECS CLI version one dot one. It simplifies a lot of the setup, cluster configuration, VPC setup for your applications when using with ECS. So it's sort of set up, sets up your cloud formation stack for you so you don't have to do all that work. So for purpose of this de demonstration, I have already set up a cluster using a default launch type called Fargate just to save time and not wait for VPCs and subnets and internet gateways being created while we wait. Um, and then I set up the cluster, just brought it up. And I defined a application as a compose file. So let's just look at that. I have the image sitting in ECR, and I've mapped the ports uh, to AT for the, for the ENI. I'll come to networking later. And we are using CloudWatch logs here, which is AWS logs driver. And this is the group, pre group prefix and the stream prefix that we are going to use in US East One. Once you have defined your application, from a compose standpoint, you only have to do So it brings up a new task for me in the ECA as Fargate launch type because I already defined that my preference launch type for this cluster is of ECS launch type. There is more work that I'm, so I'm switching a little back again with respect to defining the ECS specifics of this uh, task that you are launching. With respect to ECS, what you want to define is the CPU and memory resources at the task level this is, again, a new uh, resource that we have introduced for Fargate. Until now, you defined only at the container level. And also, the networking configuration. Where do you want us to place this task? And this is within your VPC, within your subnet. So I've also specified security groups to meet my application requirements over here. Switching to the console a little bit, if you look at the clusters, the clusters here are really heterogeneous. You can run Fargate tasks, you can run ECS tasks and services, side by side. So cluster becomes this administrative boundary where you're running all these tasks. Let's go and check on the task that we just launched. So this is the container that we just launched. By the way, I do want to go back and talk about the, uh, the logging experience. We also have a... Uh, a new role that we have introduced at the task level, which is the task execution role. This enables us as ECS service to take certain actions on your behalf. So let's see. So going to the cluster level, my internet is a little slow. Okay, so let's do a PS real quick. This is my task definition ID. And I can just see which tasks are running. So I just brought up this task over here. And it came up with a public IP. So I defined in my networking configuration that I want to bring up this task with a public IP. This is, again, a new capability uh, that we are introducing with Fargate. So I go back here. Let's see what the, uh, whether the app is up and running. And we have a WordPress running. So this is a quick demo of how Fargate task can be spun up. There, if you look at the ENIs, let's just go into the console real quick, look at the task. And the task that we just brought up, it was this one for Fargate demo. You have a dedicated ENI to the task. So you just have a task and an ENI. That's all you need to manage. Okay. So
So now we looked at the demo. Let's visit some of the key product features. We will begin with networking. As I just showed, you can have a task spin up with just an ENI in a, a subnet that you designate us to place it in with a public IP. Here it is working with an internet gateway. And you can spin it up with, you know, you can spin it up across multiple AZs and subnets. It's really a placement time consideration as far as uh, your run task or service, uh, bringing your service up is concerned. So in the far, Fargate model, even though there are no instances to manage, each task gets its own ENI in a separate network namespace. That namespace is shared by containers within that same task. This is a recently launched feature, as Anthony was mentioning. It is called AWS VPC mode. And it is the default way, and rather the only way, of running your tasks with Fargate. This provides the level of separation and of responsibility when it comes to managing the security of your tasks. Because as you as a user, while you don't have to worry about the infrastructure anymore, you have complete control over the networking policies, the routing, via, and you know, via security groups and NACLs for what your task communicates with. We are leveraging the CNI plugin, which is part of the CNCF foundation, by the way, for the purposes of uh, implementing this. We also see a lot of customers take advantage of the capabilities of the application load balancer and the recently launched network load balancer. You can continue to use them in the same way as ECS service integration provides today. You register your target types with your load balancer on the back end, and ECS Service Scheduler is able to uh, register them with your, with your load balancers. In the case of Fargate, though, you have to register with your IPs because you cannot give a target type of instances anymore. So we talked about security and the network level isolation and how it, it, Fargate tasks can run in your VPCs. But let's also talk about the level of isolation and how you could think about it when planning your clusters with ECS and Fargate. So we continue to use the notion of a cluster in Fargate, even though the cluster doesn't really have to have any instances registered with it. So in this case, I have four different clusters under the same account in the same region. In ECS with EC2 launch type, the way it works is you register your instances with the cluster, and all these instances that are part of the cluster, they can run any of these applications, and you can control the placement of them. So with respect to isolation, you get the same level of isolation in the prod cluster as with ECS mode, as you do with Fargate. So in this case, your prod, prod cluster may have the same underlying infrastructure only for the applications running within it. The notification application running in the prod cluster in top left will not share the infrastructure with any other tasks in the dev, QA, or beta clusters. With respect to permission tiers, again, it goes by the what you want, who do you want to, to be able to run tasks or view tasks and services within your cluster. So you maintain your cluster as the administrative boundary regardless of which launch type you're using uh, ECS with. So if you have the same set of applications, you separate the user permissions based on the environment they should have access to. Secondly, we have task level permissions. So 
If you ask the question that who has access to my DynamoDB tables as an application or S3 buckets, we can give an identity to your task. The task IAM roles, and this was a feature that was introduced for ECS, and it applies for Fargate as well. And lastly, because Fargate abstracts the underlying infrastructure, there are certain actions that ECS service needs to take on your behalf. And you can explicitly grant these permissions to ECS, whether it's pushing your logs to CloudWatch logs or providing authentication to ECR and seamlessly be able to pull your ECR images. Uh, you have control over what level of permissions you want to give to the service. Now you can run your containers very easily with Fargate, with no infrastructure management, but where do you store the images? Amazon ECR is a fully managed, highly available registry with a global footprint. The additional capabilities that I mentioned with the task execution role enables us to provide seamless authentication to ECR. Similarly, if you are using a public repository, let's say like Docker Hub, you can continue to do so. From a product perspective, it is also, uh, we are also looking at supporting third party private repositories. With respect to visibility and monitoring, this becomes pretty important if you think about in the Fargate model, because you have only your task and your network interface that you have to manage. But at the same time, how do you look into what's actually happening in your task? So we have, by default, CloudWatch logs and CloudWatch events supported. We also have service level metrics that you do today with ECS. So you can monitor your service CPU and service memory utilization. You can also set up the auto scaling policies based on uh, the thresholds that you set up for these metrics. And with Fargate, today you can run uh, your tasks with an ephemeral storage. It is backed by EBS. It is really meant for scratch space or some temporary storage that you want for your applications. The storage space you get for your containers is 10 GB. And in addition to that, if your containers have a need to be able to share volumes amongst themselves, uh, there's another uh, 4 GB carved out for that purpose. So let us look at the pricing and configuration options for Fargate. As mentioned earlier, the pricing dimensions for CPU and memory have been introduced at the task level. Uh, you are built on a per second granularity. Uh, CPU and memory are independent dimensions, so you only pay by the per CPU second and per GB second. Uh, there is a one minute minimum in this case, and the billing begins when you start downloading the images for your task. So you only pay for the resources that you consume. So here we have defined CPU and memory at one vCPU and three GB. That's perfectly valid configuration, and there are certain increments that we offer that we look at real quick. So here are the configurations supported today with Fargate. As you can see, you can have about 2 GB to 8 GB, generally for all configurations, to meet your application needs the best. So if you have a more compute optimized uh, workload or a more memory optimized, you should be able to do that by customizing this and picking the right combination of CPU and memory for your particular task. You should look at the Fargate website for pricing details. We also launched today uh, support with CloudFormation. Uh, so if you have CloudFormation stacks with ECS and you want to set up your default launch types for Fargate and you want to start launching Fargate containers, you should be able to do that. In addition, with respect to the scale that Anthony was talking about earlier, uh, we also have a very high, very strong reliability track record. 
And we have service level agreements uh, at, for computed service, compute services like EBS and EC2. We are now extending that to also include ECS and Fargate at 99.99%. So you may ask that, you know, now with Fargate launch mode available, uh, which one should I choose? Or if you say that I like the simplicity of Fargate, but when should I think about using EC2 launch type? The answer is that Fargate and EC2 launch types are compatible with each other. As I mentioned earlier, the schema is essentially the same. It's only compatibility considerations when it comes to your specific task definition that you have to look at. But your Fargate and ECS, uh, EC2 launch types can run within the same cluster boundary. So if you have use cases where you need to roll your own version of the underlying infrastructure, regardless of which level you're looking at, whether it's at the army level or you have um, other software and packages that need to be running on your instance, uh, EC2 launch type is a very good answer. You want to use uh, spot instances, for example. You can run spot clusters with EC2 launch type very efficiently, and we provide integration to be able to do that. But I think the key to understand here is that this is not a one-way door. So Fargate clusters, as I showed earlier, are all heterogeneous. Say you have different requirements where the notification application here would like to be able to move to Fargate, but has a different timeline. It is a different set of developers, and they do want to move at their own cadence, whereas the shopping cart and the web app are ready to move to Fargate. As you notice, the shopping cart and the web app here, they are just running these tasks in the same network boundary as you are running your EC2 launch type tasks. And they, the communication model is still maintained in that sense. You can still continue to be able to uh, choose between these different launch types, go back and forth, um, depending on what your, uh, how your application requirements change over time but you will still be able to apply a uniform set of policies, whether it's at the cluster level with network isolation and uh, all three tiers of permissions that we talked about earlier. We have uh, had uh, very good uh, feedback and interaction with our early adopters. Uh, here I have some of, the, uh, some of their names. And in addition, we are also working with some of our partners in the security, monitoring, and visibility space. Uh, if you get a chance, uh, Datadog also has a demo. We're running, running with Fargate uh, at their booth, uh, how they still provide visibility with uh, stats for your containers and be able to provide uh, all the container uh, metadata, for example. So you can continue to uh, leverage their products uh, when working with Fargate. Here are some other relevant sessions. Uh, there is a deeper dive. If you want to see how I can build a application end-to-end -end with Fargate, or rather as a service, and integrate with Load Balancer, uh, you should uh, attend uh, Con333, uh, which is tomorrow. And uh, there are some other sessions that you should, uh, I, I would encourage you to check out as well. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, I, have, I do have to say that we have some uh, Fargate stickers at the back. Uh, so if you want to get some cool stickers, uh, you, can, you can grab them over there. And uh, we always love to hear feedback from customers. So thanks a lot.